Oh, Enzo Fernandez, you've done it this time. Um, should he be stripped of the shirt? That's what the, that's what the title of the video is. Uh, obviously, no, he shouldn't be. I just kind of tired of that because I just kind of felt like what the title should be. But no, he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. Is it, is that simple? If you don't know, you're lying, you do know. Enzo Fernandez made a chant. People didn't like that chant. People got offended by that chant. Makes sense. When you make a chant making fun of people, the people you make fun of might not like it and that's kind of what happened especially when those people are your teammates who you're playing week in week out with you know so that happened that all went as expected and also as expected he then apologized we didn't expect to use the comic sans font but he did you know and that was his choice he apologized and the club put our statement and i'll move on from it and in terms of how this affects affects chelsea football club people think this is huge drama this is going to be hard to resolve and i think at the end of the day they're professionals you make a lot of money play for a big team and there's people in your workplace you don't like and you move on with. And I think, ultimately, a lot of these players will sit down in like a little meeting room with a big projector at the front. Enzo Moresco will be at the front and he'll talk about the situation. He'll leave it to the floor. He'll let the players speak, air it out. You know, some words will be had. And normally, if Enzo is gracious in that and with his apologies, then those players who feel offended will talk about why they're offended. You know, Enzo will probably speak back. They'll probably be like, oh, no, no, but it's not just about saying sorry now and not recording yourself in the future or getting caught up in the euphoria of it. We just want you to know that what, what we feel like what you said is wrong and why it's wrong and why you shouldn't be saying it anymore, um, especially as our teammate. And they'll have a bit of a back and forth and I'm sure they'll move on, they'll shake hands and maybe they're not best friends. Maybe you're not coming to my, my Christmas party. But ultimately, I don't think he's going to be going any harder in on, on Enzo in training in terms of tackles. I don't think they're not going to pass him in games anymore. I think um, unless there is some kind of big split of players like defending Enzo and Enzo internally not wanting to apologise and, and, like, and there's a big split in the dressing room, that is the fear of what could happen. And hopefully it doesn't. I think it's pretty cut and dry. Enzo was in the wrong. Um, you know, like it really is that simple. People talk about intent all the time. The intent of a chant like that is at the detriment of the people who you're chanting about. So you can't really be annoyed if they don't like it. It's like, it's like if the England players on, on like a team bus, if they beat Spain, some reason started chanting about Germany and were chanting like 10 German bombers. Yeah, German players, some of them may not like that. The England players would probably all be fine, disciplined or whatever. They will have to apologize. And that wouldn't be surprising. Okay, so I don't think we should be surprised now that a similar thing has happened here with France. And especially the French players who are getting annoyed when it's like only like, what, a few years ago when Argentina beat Spain, uh, sorry, France in the final and it was team bus through Buenos Aires and they had the little weird dummies of um, Mbappe and there was, they was doing a bunch of suspect things. And now the next tournament they win is straight back to sort of mocking France and yeah, they don't like it, you know. Um, the lyrics and stuff, it all kind of goes like, you know, they, they call themselves France, their passport says French, but, you know, your, your parents are from Africa or whatever. Um, does, I mean, I'm sure there's players in the Argentina squad who weren't born in Argentina. There's probably players in that squad, yeah, whose parents aren't from Argentina. You know, it's very easy to go, oh, you guys look different, so it's obvious. You're walking a, a, a narrow line here, right? And people are going to get annoyed. And um, even as like a point on its own, outside of it being like a, a chance to mock people in this scenario, right? Even just as a broader point, it's also just incorrect and doesn't make sense. So on both levels, people have brought up other points that pundits and stuff have made in the more serious settings that have been taken with a bit more validity because they're in a serious setting and not being delivered in a goofy chant. Like Mourinho saying he would like to see players not be able to play for, you know, other nations when they're primarily from like Africa because then they make those African teams stronger and they could compete better in the World Cup. I mean, all of those French players who they are talking about were born in France, first of all. And on that Mourinho point, it's like, I haven't looked at that too massively, but to what degree, if you were born in that country, if your parents were born in that country, are we then going to a a apply that to parent, to Declan Rice and people from, or, you know, players whose parents are from Ireland and Scotland or, or Spain. And then, you know, what, like, what are we doing here type thing? Um, but that's, that's just the wider thing. You did a chant that sort of mocks a group of people. Those people happen to be your teammate. Those people weren't even relevant to the game you just won. They then got annoyed. They then posted about that in public and then you had to apologise. It's that simple. We now move on. Should be fine.